welcome to the last episode of this series of NTEC TV. The co-location of NTEC with SEMPTI under the umbrella of the Australasian Media and Technology Week will be the largest ever industry event of its kind held in Australia, with over 100 companies signing up to be a part of the three-day show in Sydney this July. The NTEC seminar program is packed with amazing speakers from overseas, such as UK lighting designer Rob Halliday, audio engineer and author Dave Swallow, and rigging and safety expert Chris Higgs. You can also book sessions led by the local industry heavyweights such as David Grant from DGSE, lighting designer Paul Collison, and Susan Twartz, and Ian Harvey from AWAG. And there are plenty of great education sessions such as the JMC Academy audio sessions, several ALIA seminars and the two-day ISF course ran by CEDIA. There is definitely something for everyone, so check out the full program online at ntechintech.com. NTEC TV will be broadcasting live from the trade show with interviews and much more from our set opposite the staging connection stand. Look forward to seeing you there. In this show, as usual, we have a bumper edition with the crew going behind the scenes at the Kylie Minogue Aphrodite Show in Melbourne. And we spoke to the guys at the School of Audio Engineering, SAE, who have over 40 educational facilities around the world allowing people to get higher education in the audio engineering and filmmaking field. But first, the NTech crew went out to the Rod Laver Arena and were fortunate enough to speak to Stephen Douglas, who has worked with such performers such as Kanye West, The Killers, and Rage Against the Machine. Stephen's latest gig is directing the lighting for the Carly Aphrodite show, and he showed us how he achieves this. Uh, I've been on the tour since rehearsal started in London in January. I've been running everything day to day since, uh, yeah, since day one. This show is, is quite strictly choreographed. Obviously, we've got so many dancers and we've got a lot of uh, moving parts in the stage that it's quite rehearsed, but <clears throat> not rehearsed to the point where it's soulless. It's she will still change things on a nightly basis, um, more as much for herself as as it is for anyone else. You know, she um, she likes to keep things fresh and she throws in a curveball here and there every night. And but no, it's fun. You know, if you were just running exactly the same show every night, it would probably get a little bit boring. But yeah, no, we like to stay hands on with everything and keep on top of it. And she certainly doesn't let us. Um, sit back and relax. <laughs> Initially to the eye it doesn't look like a whole lot, it looks like a pretty standard stage with a thrust and a few things but we've got there's so many gags in this show that um, yeah it's pretty big I mean we were rolling in Europe with 25 trucks and there's you know it's a four million dollar stage the whole stage is custom built it's all made by Tate Towers out of Lidditz, Pennsylvania. And the Grand MA2 uh, running in Grand MA2 software mode there's a lot of people using the console now, but still using it in the traditional Series 1. Um, we decided the time had come to, to take the step forward, and uh, yeah, it's been great. It's a lot sleeker and sexier looking than the original MA1. Um, the, all, you know, all the grey plastic is gone, we've got much bigger touch screens. Um, but the real difference is in the power. Uh, the software is vastly improved, stuff like the, shape, the effects engines and um, yeah, just everything that it can do now is a lot, it's a lot quicker, a lot slicker, easier to program and uh, the syntax has mostly stayed the same since Series 1, there has been some changes but um, we've skipped around a lot of consoles and this was definitely the best for this particular, this particular job. There's uh, 84 VL3500 washers, uh, 84 VL3000 spots, 30 VL580 volts, and four uh, 3500 FXs. Lighting fixture-wise, we haven't really done anything drastic and new. We're using a lot of LED in the show as well, a lot of uh, color blasts, and we have some custom LED tape that's built into the setup here that uh, I think Nick found at, it was either LDI or Plaza or something, and we just went and bought loads of it. And yeah, it's just basically just LE tape you stick in, but it's a lot brighter than any of the other manufacturers we've seen. And um, the real new tricks in this show are the staging more so than anything else. Um, we have a lot of flying gags. We have a lot of aerialists. Um, we have 11,000 gallons of water 
in the show, um, which is uh, makes for a very impressive and very different finale than any, any other show out there at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's really more just about lighting her and lighting the dancers. It's as the show progresses, it's drastic, it changes drastically from the outset being kind of Roman Greek, a lot of togas and stuff like that, and then you know eventually it goes into the traditional Kylie type of big pop show. And but then we also have songs that have six cues in them. Kylie has a reputation for putting on very large shows, as everyone knows, and with you know, the advent of other pop stars out there putting on equally big shows, it was time to try and step up the game a little bit for this one. Welcome back. Education in our industry is the key to developing skills and knowledge in particular fields. SAE are a leading force in educating students in aspects of audio engineering, filmmaking and gaming. We spoke to Paul Lettingham on what SAE has to offer. SAE was originally founded um, in 1976. Over the last 30 years we've seen it expand from its original home base in Bubba a motorcycle shop, I think, um, Elizabeth Street in Sydney, up to through Melbourne, um, through Australia, through Europe, uh, to now we're enfolding maybe running 50 operations. Uh, we're just over 50 operations globally um, in 23 countries on four continents. Basically, the organisation now is, is inside SA is broken off into two major divisions. Um, SAE, which is uh, historically has always been audio, but now also encompasses filmmaking as well too. Film's really been the next big move, uh, you know, and the film courses is a great synergy between audio and film. So we have audio degrees and film degrees both under the SA banner. If one was looking at actually studying a degree, and most of the students now actually look at studying a Bachelor of Audio Production, that would actually be a two-year full-time program. We actually operate it on a, on a accelerated trimester system. So rather than doing the standard two university semesters a year where you're only having about 32 or 34 contact weeks, we actually operate three study periods or three contact uh, uh, areas a year. This enables students to actually complete a historical three-year university degree in two years. There's a couple of reasons for this. Um, firstly, people generally aren't interested in sitting around uni you know, for, for three or four years these, these days studying. They really just want to get their qualification and actually get into the workforce. And, and secondly, there's a, a the stuff these days, because the technology is moving so quickly, um, the stuff you're learning in the, you know, the first semester at uni is generally obsolete and gone by the time you actually finish. There's a little bit of a misconception that um, the audio schools um, and people studying audio education are just training for recording studios. And anyone who works in, you know, in the music technology market knows that the commercial recording sector has been a, a contracting market for the last few years. Funnily enough though, you actually have a look at the amount of work that's been created in the market there's a lot more work out there. And this has really got to do with the advent of digital technology. You know, digital technology has taken us to a point where you can build really good independent studios for a fraction of the cost of what it used to take us to 15 or 20 years ago. That means there's a lot more independent production which is taking place now. And the type of education we're providing here is actually trying to reflect that. So we're not training people just for recording studio work. Uh, we're trying to give people a, a set of generic specialist skills um, which they can really take anywhere. So whether it be live sound production, which is a big component of the courses now, um, you know, theatre sound, recording studio work, post-production, these are all sort of folded into a bachelor's program. It's not just a specialist component, and that's really the big difference these days between training um, in you know, a certificate or a diploma setting and um, studying at a university level, studying bachelor's degrees. You know, it's that, that specialist um, knowledge component that transfers across both, but it's the general knowledge component. So it's critical thinking and analysis skills. Dave Fitzpatrick um, is probably one of our, our, our better success stories in the last few years. I started working while I still was a student here at SAE and uh, it really helped, I suppose, being able to, you know, go out to a show and um, meet bands and say, you know, 
I, I have access to a recording studio. Um, I now actually need to record some bands. Would you guys like to come in and you know track a, a session for free? And um, that's how you know SA really sort of helped me along in in meeting bands, I suppose, by you know giving them this free opportunity to come and record here at SA, record in a really good studio uh, at no cost to them. And um, that's you know how. SA sort of really got me in, in the game, I suppose. Just got back from a six week tour with a band called Miami Horror, who are based here in Melbourne. And um, I just finished a tour quite recently with a Norwegian band called Data Rock, uh, who came over here. It's my second tour with them as well, too. Uh, with them, I've got to do festivals like Big Day Out, and I've got to do festivals like uh, Splendor in the Grass and uh, Falls Festival, you know, mixing on the main stages of those, uh, so it's been really good. There's something about doing the sound there and then live um, is what I really enjoy, seeing the look uh, on the crowd's faces, um, you know, and knowing that what you're doing right now is actually working. A lot of people, I think, underestimate how important or, the, or, the, or the, how important education really is. You always see that attitude from some years ago. You know, think, oh, you know, you know, back in the day, the only way to deal with this, you know, you get out and you push road cases around, you make coffees and you patch gear in, and you know, and that's why you learn on the job. And, and I've always found that attitude just a little bit surprising. Open days, great opportunity for people to come and actually have a walk through the facility, um, talk to students, um, talk to staff, talk to enrolment uh, and administration people uh, about the different options, different funding uh, available for the courses. Next one is happening in Melbourne on Saturday, July 2nd, um, usually from 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, then uh, we move through to October will be the next one. And that's usually for people who are actually uh, looking for starting in probably a 2012 course. So we usually have three intake periods a year, uh, beginning in March, uh, then in July, then again in September. The skills that you learn inside, um, degree education, yeah, there's you know, learning how to use all the consoles and the gear, uh, but there's learning how to think and learning how to continue to think and to learn and to grow as a person inside an academic field, but also inside a career path these are the things that are really valuable. Your sound system is only as good as its weakest link, and with this in mind, choosing exceptional equipment is critical. Cutting a corner in just one part of your system can dramatically reduce expected performance. At Jans, the brands we represent are world-renowned for their reliability and industry acceptance. Our range of products are designed to create virtually any type of audio system. From a small bar to a convention centre, a basic pub gig to a full concert touring rig, there are products in our stable for everyone. Jans, the number one supplier of professional audio products for over 40 years. Over the last 10 months, NTech TV has provided an insight into our exciting industry. The entertainment industry is a major player in the Australian economy, and each year it is growing from strength to strength. With the foresight of Staging Connections and ETF, NTech TV has grown from humble beginnings to having over 25,000 hits on the net. With figures like this, it shows that you, the viewer, are liking what we are producing. And we thank you. My name is Pamela and I'll be bringing you the latest and greatest technology that will be showcased at the NTech 2011 Expo in Sydney. Hey and welcome to NTech TV. Today we're here in Melbourne at the Rod Laver Arena with Big Mick. World-class manufacturers. 
depend upon national audio systems. Australia's number one distributor of pro and commercial audio. You can achieve great things with the right products, people and professionals. National Audio Systems. The team at Entech TV would like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors who we have enjoyed working with over the past 10 episodes. Stage and Screen, PRG, Screencom, Maya, Jans, ULA, Staging Connections and Show Technology. We look forward to working with them on site when we bring you ETV Live from the Entech Intech Trade Show. I'm Pamela Hub Young and I look forward to seeing you at Entech Intech. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.